In this episode, we're going to look at five open source tools for web developers. These are all cross-platform, which means no matter who you are working with, who you are collaborating with, you can all open the same files and work with the same workflow. This is really important to us as an agency where we have staff and contractors from all around the world working with us on our projects. Stay tuned for these five awesome free and open source cross-platform tools. This episode is sponsored by Cloudways, the managed cloud hosting platform we trust with our agency. Choose from five cloud providers and host unlimited PHP applications for your projects. Enjoy all year round support, managed security and automated backups. Find out more at agencytrailblazer.com forward slash cloudways. The first tool in our armory is Genie. This may be considered a basic IDE, but it's really powerful under the hood. It's super lightweight, but has a plethora of plugins, works across all sorts of operating systems, and I've even successfully used this IDE on the Raspberry Pi when I've been working with Python projects extremely powerful, extremely lightweight, and works everywhere. I, I can't get enough of Genie. I love it in dark mode. There are tons of themes available for it as well. I do think people may consider this quite a basic interface, but it's something that works ridiculously well for me and for our team. Next, we have Git Kraken. If you are managing your source through Git, maybe in GitHub, Bitbucket, etc., then you want to be able to do version control. You want to do pull push requests. You want to see who is doing what. And you can do that via the command line. That's all great. But as a visual person, I rely on Git Kraken. We use that again cross platform and across the business so that we can commit our changes and keep track on what is going on. I really love the tree view as well as I can see the overall process and progress of our projects. No matter how old I get, FTP will continue to reign, of course, SFTP, you really should be using SFTP. And I use FileZilla to transfer all of our files. Personally, I use the pro version to support the project, but also to upload to some of the cloud services that the pro version supports. But most of the team are happily rocking and rolling again, cross-platform with the open source FileZilla that is available completely for free. As a developer, I want to be able to test my code quickly, to test my changes quickly, and I don't necessarily want to have to keep uploading everything and testing them online. I can do this using the next tool, which is XAMPP. Or is it XAMPP? I don't know. You tell me in the comments. But this allows you to fire up a simple PHP slash MySQL server that you can install pretty much any PHP application you want on. Works on Windows, it works on your Mac, it works on Linux. You can set it up as a local host server for local developers within your office to connect to or via VPN if you want to go that far. Or for myself, you can do it on your local machine and test the code that you have. Have. And finally, we have Docker. Docker is kind of hard to explain, but I guess it's like mini virtual operating systems that run on your machine, but utilize the hardware. Virtualization virtualizes the hardware as well, I believe, but these are kind of mini containers that would allow you to run a whole range of different operating systems that all run different things. For example, I've got a Docker set up on one of my Linux machines that runs the Cirx dock. This is based on the Alpine operating system. That's the Linux operating system. And it's running all of the dependencies that are needed to run the Cirx search engine, allowing me to search through that rather than going direct through Bing, Google, Quant, etc. And that's all done in a Docker, a Docker container. It also allows me to run lots of other applications. So I could run a WordPress website. I could run a uh, small Ubuntu server. I could 
run a VPN setup, a, a Let's Encrypt server. I'm, I'm kind of making things up, but you can pretty much run anything and you tend to just have to write a line of code to make it happen. There are tons of pre-built docs out there if you want to start up a quick server or you want to test something. You simply install Docker on Mac, Linux or Windows and you start pulling those images. I'm gonna be doing some deep dives in how we use Docker and how you can use Docker in your agency over the next up and coming few weeks and months. So I would recommend that you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell notification icon. Let me know what tools you have heard of from this video and let us know what open source tools you use in your agency. Let's help each other out. Also, I'm on Mastodon. I've set up my own instance, which is freaking phenomenal. So if you want to connect with me via Mastodon, then check out the notes below for my handle. It would be great to connect with a whole load of you on a decentralized social media platform. I'm really getting into the Fediverse over going with the big corporate social media giant. So uh, really, really exciting area to be involved with. So if you're on Mastodon, connect with me. If you're not, I recommend you go check the links out in the description below. We're also going to do some deep dives on that in the next up and coming few weeks. Have an awesome day. If we don't see you on Mastodon, let's see you in the comments or in the next episode. Mm. I also forgot to mention that I've done a podcast all about this. It's episode number 300, and we actually deep dive into a whole load of other tools that we use in our agency. So check out agencytrailblazer.com, and you can enjoy all of the wonderful free and open source cross-platform tools that we use in our agency. There is a link in the show notes. Sorry about that. Cheerio.